This video is an overview of rear side window and regulator removal, installation, and adjustment on a Volkswagen New Beetle 2003 to 2010. Remember to work safe and work smart. Work in a well ventilated area, protect yourself from injury at all times, and attempt all work at your own risk. Before beginning, consult your owner's manual or the appropriate repair manual for your vehicle. Removing, replacing, and adjusting the rear side window, its regulator, and motor are similar to the procedures for the front door windows, but there are more differences than there are similarities. Now part of the procedure will require removing the rear interior side panel. The same procedure will have to be used if you're replacing the convertible top outer shell. What do you say we get started? Let's go. All right, Mike, what are you going to do next? I'm not going to do anything next, Buzz. <laughs> you're going to do all the work. But we've put down the convertible top. We've lowered the side window, we've taped off the chrome trim to protect it, we've left the battery connected, now we have to start by removing the seat bottom. Okay, and you probably want me to do that, right? Absolutely. Okay, so we're starting by taking the seat belt latches off. You know, I think I could get this backrest off without taking these uh, latches off. Why am I doing it? Well, we're going to take the latches off so that we don't uh, scratch them when we remove the seat back. We've pulled the headrests off, and now we've finished taking the bolts out of the seat back. Now we've got to open up the pass-through door and pull it off towards the front. Then pull out the bottom of the seat back and lift it straight up. Once we get that out, we're ready to take our side panel out. We've taped off the rollover protection here to protect the side panel when we remove it. Now we've got to remove this screw on the side panel. And if you'd operate the flaps buzz until you hear the motor for the locks run. Now the arm for the motor is facing up so that it'll clear the body and we can pop the arm free from the rod and close the flap. Now pull the rear edge of the side panel inward. Now to release the side panel from the sill plate, I'm going to insert my plastic bone underneath, pry up and pull up at the same time to release it. Hopefully the clip stays with the panel. And I'll just move the bone up and twist it to release the side panel from the body. There. Got it? Yeah. Now we can pull it up out of the sill. Pulls it right out of the window sill, so now we're free. Remove the clip from the cable and pop the socket off of the ball and then remove the cable from the bracket. We pulled up the side panel and disconnected the electrical connectors. Then we removed the rear and front seat belt trims, unbolted the rear seat belt, and pulled it through the panel. Now at the front, we'll remove the bolt, the seat belt retaining bracket. We'll slide the seat belt off that and then thread that through the side panel. Then we can remove the side panel. Now that we've got the side panel removed, we're going to pull, I'm going to pull off the inner window slot seal and remove the upper retaining plate. Buzz, what are you doing? Well, down here I'm taking off the retainer for the loudspeaker in the back. Take the last bolt out here. And then I'm going to carefully lower it down. Kind of weasel it past the wiring harness here. What I'll need to do here is push this grommet through the carrier plate so I have a little bit of slack because I want to leave the connector to the window motor connected. I'm going to carefully lay this down on top of a, a towel here just so we can protect the speaker cone from any damage. We've put the window all the way up to the top and Buzz has already removed one of the two bolts that hold the uh, window to the window regulator. Now he's taking out the second one. Now we've got to lower the window down until we can see the lower nut in this hole in the regulator and remove that. Then we can pull the window out of the body.
Now we can pull the window out of the car, carefully making sure we don't scrape the outer seal. Now I'll move the regulator to its top position, just so we don't damage the seal when we remove the regulator from the body. Now I'll just disconnect this motor. These connectors can be a little tight. Now we can remove the regulator from the body. We've already pulled the two body plugs right here and here and loosened the combi nuts as well as loosened the top combi nut up here using special tool VAG1739. We'll show you at the bench how that works. Now we just pull the regulator up out of the body very carefully making sure that we don't scrape the outer seal. All right, this is our window regulator. We've got three mounting points, right? right. We use special tool 1739 to take these out. Why don't right. you tell us how it works? No, no, why don't you tell us? Okay, I'll tell you how <laughs> it works. When we look at our adjustment points, we'll see that every adjustment point has a stud here that's used to make the adjustment and also has a locking nut. Right. So we have to use special tool number 1739 to achieve that. Now, actually, this is composed of two tools. On the inside, we have a four millimeter hex, pretty standard tool. Now it lives inside a 13 millimeter deep socket. We use the four millimeter hex to make the adjustment on the stud, like this. We use the 13 millimeter socket to tighten down the nut and lock it into position. Let's try and make some sense out of these adjustments. Okay. This is the way the regulator sits when it's installed in the car. And we've got two mounting points down here. Now these are adjusted at the factory and shouldn't be moved. They should be tight. If they're loose, put a drop of Loctite on them. This mounting point up here is your adjustment for where the bottom of the window sits in the body. In relationship to the body, re right. either in or out, correct? Yeah. Okay, so I don't have to do anything with the bottom bolts. Right. And then I just adjust this one to adjust the lower part of the glass, inside or outside, in relationship to the body. Right. Okay, but there's other adjustments we can make, and we've got a lot of adjustment points on the window, correct? Right. Yes. All right, let me turn this around, and we'll get it like it came out of the car. I notice at the bottom here, we've got an adjustment point that we can move in and out. Right. Right? This one is going to allow us to adjust the top of the window, in or out, in, in or relationship out. to where it fits in the, in the roof seal, correct? Right. All right, and then we've got uh, the studs for mounting points, and mm -hmm. they go into these slots. Let me hold this up here. And you can, you can see we've got a lot of room for movement here. We can tilt the window back, we can tilt it forward, we can move it up, we can move it down, we can move it all over the place. Right, right. So this is really not, not an exact science. No. And it's no. probably better if we go ahead and put this back together, put it in the car, and then make the adjustments, right? Right. All right. Sounds good. Okay, we've already reinstalled the window regulator in the window, and we've got it up to the point where we're ready to make the adjustments. Tell you what, why don't we review this to make sure that I've got it straight. Okay. Then? What's the first thing we did? First thing we did was we lowered the window regulator into the body with the window regulator run all the way up to the top. W without the window attached to right. it, correct? Then we just snugged up the mounting bolts for the regulator at the bottom. Yeah, not too, too tight. Not too tight, and also the one in the top. Right. And we also attached the connector to the motor, mm -hmm. and then we lowered the motor until we could get to the point to see our l attachment point for the bottom of the window, correct? Right. Then I put the window in. I put the nut on the lower portion, just mm -hmm. hand tight. We raised the window carefully until we could get to the points at the top where we could put our window attachment bolts on those. And we left those snug also. Right, because we've got to be able to move the window around. All right, where'd we go from there? Okay, then we went and we installed the upper mounting plate, the upper retaining plate here. And you've got a great tip that we need to be careful with. Okay, yeah, that. you've got to be careful because these two upper bolts go down into the regulator. They help locate the top of the regulator. So we, we threaded them in, just started them so they help us to align the plate when we put it in. Then we push the plate down and we put in the rest of the mounting bolts and then we've got these still just loose All right. or finger tight at the most. Now from that point we went back and we actually tightened the lower mounting points for the regulator. Right, now, now that this is holding the regulator into its proper well, place. But we still left the top mounting bolt loose. Right, because that's an adjustment All right. we're going to need. And then we reinstalled our window seal. The window seal. And the back edge of the window seal uh, is a little difficult to install. 
a uh, little tricky because it's got to go onto two brackets and into another bracket. Uh, our tip for that is to try and install the inner portion of the seal first and then work towards the outside. Okay, we put our regulator in, we put our window in, we have them in relative positions. I guess we're ready to make the fine adjustments. Okay. Well, the first thing that we've got to do is make sure that the door is in adjustment. There's no use in trying to adjust the windows if the door is out of adjustment. All right. So that's the first thing. This one looks like it's okay. Now we're going to open up the door a little and put up the, the rear window. Remember that this window is loose. So we'll put up the front window and we've got to be very careful when we shut the door that the windows aren't going to hit. So I'm going to kind of move this one back and then very carefully shut the door. Then we'll move this window into the approximate position where it needs to be. And now what we've got to do is adjust the bottom in and out. And, uh, Relative to the body, right? right. And we're going to be making that adjustment on our window regulator itself. Right. All right. Now I've got our special tool inserted in here. Okay. And so I'm you just, can let me know when we're in pretty close position. I'm just going to put a bone across the window, and the window needs to move in. So Buzz is going to screw the adjuster in, and I'm going to put some pressure on it because I can push this regulator back in. He's going to put turn that in a ways. Other way. Okay, that's about right, right there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to lock down the regulator. And one last thing that we can do for like a final adjustment, if that adjuster didn't get it into the right place, is push in a little bit on the window to get it right, and then tighten up two six millimeter bolts to go down into the regulator. Okay, so now we should have the bottom portion of this window adjusted. Right. So now what we've got to do is adjust the angle of the window and the height. So the specification for along this gap is nine millimeters. All right. So I'm going to estimate that using the end of this bone, which is about nine millimeters. And that's even all the way from the bottom to the top. And we get the height lined up up here. So that this line right here is smooth. Now when we've got that all set, we can go ahead and tighten down the upper two bolts on the window. And you don't really need to tighten these a great no, deal. They're, they're very, very light torque on those, so you're you just snugging them down. If you over tighten them, you will break the window. All right, those are tight. What's next? Okay, now the next thing is up here. The alignment of how far in or out the window is to the body. At the top. Yeah, at the top. Now, we don't have to have that perfect because as that comes up into the seal, it's going to go into the right position. Right. But if it's too far in or out, that's the lower adjustment. Okay, so I'll have to lower so the window to down. Lower that get window to that. down. We'll have to make a guesstimate of which way we want to go, lower right. the window, make our adjustment, and then check it again, right? Right. Should we go ahead and do that? Sure. In All this right. case, the window is in, so we've got to screw out the adjuster. All right, let me line that up. Okay, I'll make sure that that's lock nut is loose. I'll go ahead and put my adjuster on there. Yeah, three millimeter Allen. Which way was I turning it, Mike? Uh, you're going to turn it out. All right, I'm threading it out. Want to try that one? Yeah. Uh, Let's see how that did. Snug that a little. Okay, we'll go back up. Oops kind of folded that edge over. Why don't you try that again? That did All come right. out. But I wonder if we're a little too close now. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. All right. So I then I can uh, lower this back down. Yep. Make sure that one's snug. Check and it our, one more time. We yep. should be done, right? All right, we should be done. Okay, that looks pretty good. Well, we'll still have to go through and put three pieces of tape on here, right? And then we'll uh, measure the depth of the window going into the roof seal. Right, just like we did on the front door. Okay. Okay, let's uh, go over to the bench and take a look at just a couple of more adjustments on the side trim that you might have to make. Let's take a minute and just look at the side panel before we put it back in the vehicle. And we recommend that you do the same thing. 
The reason for that is once the side panel's back in the vehicle, you can't make any adjustments on it. Right. Now, as you remember, there are two movements to the side flap. The rear portion lifts up, and that's controlled by a motor. What's critical is the operation of the front portion. This is controlled by a cable that's attached to our roof. When it moves, it pulls the side flap forward and underneath the side panel. Now, what's critical about the adjustment of this piece is that all of the gaps along here are even and that the height of the flaps matches the height of the side panel. And it's very important that when this front portion slides forward that it's low enough to clear the side panel or we're going to scratch the surface. Right. Now, there isn't any service repair information that describes this adjustment, so you'll have to check frequently for updates. But we're going to give you what we've got now. Mike's got a piece off the car, and we're going to take a look at that. Okay, here's the three adjustment points for the forward flap right here, here, and here. To adjust these, you would loosen up the screws underneath and then use an Allen key to turn the insert. This will raise or lower this portion of the cover. While those are loose, you could also turn this sideways or slide it back and forth to adjust this gap along here. In order to adjust the height of this, we've got the three slotted screws right here in here that hold this into the side panel. By loosening those, we can adjust this up and down and also the tilt of it. So again, as Buzz said, we want to make sure that this is level and the gaps are even all the way around. One thing that we recommend that you not ever adjust at this time is the length of this rod that operates it. I think that's about it. Well, we've taken care of the adjustment for the front window. We've yep. taken care of adjustment for the rear window. We've taken a little bit of a quick look at the uh, side panel in the flap adjustment. So right. what do you say we move on and take care of getting that roof shell off? Sounds good. Feedback or questions, visit our online tech forums or our online technical library at bentleypublishers.com.